eat, it's in everything we eat, and honestly makes life worth living. But have you ever wondered what exactly is going on in your brain as you binge eat ice cream and raw cookie dough in your dark living room alone on a Saturday night? Not that I do that. I'm Shannon and I'm a neuroscience PhD candidate. And this is your brain on sugar. Sugar, as we consume it, refers to a variety of carbohydrates created from just three elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. While this stuff is naturally found in most plants, it is also artificially added to just about everything we consume, from soft drinks to salad dressing. Now, when I lick this lollipop, sugar binds to my sweet taste receptors on my tongue. That information is sent to my brain via the cranial nerves. This information is relayed to several brain regions before reaching the primary taste cortex, or the gustatory cortex. The gustatory cortex is responsible for the perception of taste. After perceiving sugar intake, this region then signals to your VTA and nucleus accumbens. You know, the good old reward pathway. These areas in response release large amounts of dopamine, stimulating your rewarding response, letting your brain know that this lollipop is dope as hell. Mm-hmm. But this pathway is also activated before I put any of the sweet stuff in my body. In fact, just seeing candy primes my brain for the sugar-based reward activation. Human brain imaging studies have also shown that other sensory cues, such as the smell of a fresh batch of cookies coming out of the oven, or just the sight of your favorite ice cream store, is enough to excite these dopamine-rich areas of the brain. Does that mean that someone could truly be a chocoholic? Oh my. No more chocolate for you. Well, studies show that the overconsumption of highly sweetened foods, such as soft drinks and candy, is comparable to drug addiction. Further, sugar overconsumption can cause cross-tolerance to other drugs of abuse, a hallmark of addictive substances, as well as induce a dependent-like state. But hey, it can't be as addictive as cocaine, right? One study in rats found that the reward of sugar could actually surpass the reward of cocaine, even in cocaine-addicted rats. That's right, when given the choice between drug or soft drinks, rats consistently choose sugar, showing the highly reinforcing power of it. One of my favorite ways to wash down a big old lollipop is with a big old gulp of soda. And I'm not alone. In fact, 40% of Americans report drinking soda on a daily basis. Its popularity has grown from year to year among all kinds of people. So what effect is this soft drink obsession having on my brain? Well, it turns out a lot. Studies have revealed that increased soda intake is correlated with increased risk for ischemic stroke, dementia, as well as Alzheimer's disease. Further, soda drinking is associated with lower total brain volume and worse episodic memory. Okay, well, I can just switch out my soda for a diet soda, right? Well, it turns out that artificial sweeteners found in diet drinks, while calorically invisible, can still have substantial effects on the brain. While I may not be able to consciously tell the difference between regular Coke and Coke Zero, my brain can. One study found that unlike real sugar, artificial sweeteners do not excite dopaminergic, dopamine Dopamin, dop I'm so jittery. <laughs> Dopaminergic brain cannot excite dopamine-rich midbrain area. One study found that unlike real sugar, artificial sweeteners do not excite dopamine-rich midbrain areas associated with reward. Further, fMRI studies show that those who drink diet soda regularly actually displayed altered reward processing compared to non-diet soda drinkers suggesting that downing diet soda may actually change how your brain processes sweetness. So, diet or not, soda is powerful stuff. There are two truths in this world. Skydiving is dumb and you should never do it, and kids love candy. Oh, ho, ho. they know good candy when they taste it. But how does sugar overconsumption affect children's developing brains? Well, studies in rodents suggest that overconsumption of sugar during adolescence may actually result in a reduction of reward processing in adulthood. While this may seem like a good thing, lack in motivation for reward is a hallmark symptom of psychiatric disorders such as depression. The truth is your brain needs sugar in the form of glucose. It's dependent on it, and while it can be supplemented, glucose cannot be replaced. Your brain relies on a continuous supply of glucose via the bloodstream, and it is the main consumer of about 20% of the glucose-derived energy. 
Glucose in the brain provides the energy needed for neurotransmission, provides the substrate for production of neurotransmitters, and appears to play a central role in learning and long-term memory storage. But a little sugar goes a long way. So be sure to exercise moderation.